What's up guys, this is Benny, aka Valley Taco on Instagram. Some of you requested a install vid on the front camera I put in, so I just wanted to go over it really quickly. Um, obviously the camera's already installed, everything's hooked up, so it'll just be a brief overview. Um, my truck's a 2018 Toyota Tacoma with Safety Sense. This should be pretty similar to other models that have Intune. This specific kit is made for Toyotas with Intune. I think it works for the 4Runner as well. Uh, but you guys wanna, might want to check that out before you buy it. So since I have everything hooked up, uh, I don't want to take my camera off. Uh, so just pretend that the camera is not there. Basically what I did is I used some painter's tape to protect the sensor. Also works great for marking it. Uh, I measured everything up, marked the middle. Uh, I also did the same thing on the bottom of the grill. Uh, I used a straight edge and mark perpendicular to the mark that I put on the sensor. And then I mocked up the camera and tried to figure out where the middle of the bolt was. Um, and then I tried to mark uh, perpendicular to that mark I put on the grill. Uh, there is some room um, and you can move it a little bit forward as you can see. So it's probably safer to move it a little bit forward uh, so you have some wiggle room. As you can see that's where the bolt goes through. Um, there is a nut that connects on top of the bolt. Um, if you put it right in the middle of this sensor you may run into a little bit of interference with the plastic piece. I did have to notch it a little bit so the, the nut can fit. Um, I did move the marking a little bit, a few millimeters to the driver's side so I didn't have to grind off so much plastic. I did use a Dremel to uh, notch that and the nut per fit perfectly. There's no issues, it, it goes down really tight um, but just keep that in mind that if you're going to put it right in the middle, you may run into a little bit of an issue with the plastic right there. Um, so either move it a little bit to the driver side, a few millimeters, um, and get ready with a Dremel um, so you can make a little notch or just move it completely, you know, probably like a centimeter or two to the driver side and you won't encounter any problems if you don't mind a little bit of a staggered uh, view. So you can see how I fed the wire through the grill. Uh, felt a little lazy, didn't use any loom. The camera itself is waterproof, so I'm hoping that the cable is well insulated as well. Um, so I ran it through there. And once I got past the headlight, I did run it through a loom just because there's a bunch of dirt and debris that's underneath my hood. Um, so that cable from the camera connects to another cable. Uh, which will eventually run to the controller. Uh, it's a plug. You just line up the arrows and, you know, I secured it with electrical tape just so, you know, it stays stays together. There are some other wires that you either cut or keep depending on what options you want on the camera. I'll post up in the description what wires go to what and which ones I cut. Um, and pretty much I fed most of the wires through the access hole in the firewall. Um, it was almost 25 feet, so it took some time. All right, so this is where the firewall access hole feeds into the cab. Um, if you've ever fed anything into the cab from the firewall then you're very familiar with it uh, like I mentioned before um, I had 25 plus feet of cable um, that I ran into the cab so I just bunched that together zip tied it and then I zip tied the whole thing to an existing harness as you can see uh, I made sure that it wasn't going to interfere with either the gas pedal or the brake pedal it's nice and snug and tucked in there and it's not going to come loose so some people take off this panel to run the wire to the head unit. Uh, quite honestly, I felt too lazy. Um, I found a wire underneath there that I kind of just rode along and zip tied to and fished it through the little hole that ran up to the head unit and it was fine.
So before you take off the head unit, you probably want to make sure that you have somewhere soft to rest it on. Uh, I have a moving blanket here. Um, so when I do take it off and pull it forward, I can put it down onto something. All right, to take off the bezel, basically what you want to do is grab it from the right corner and give it a nice gentle pull. And then once that's loose, you're going to grab it from the left side and then pull it out completely. All right, now that the bezel's off, uh, to take off the head unit, there are four 10 millimeter bolts on both sides. Um, I also put some painter's tape here just to protect the plastic piece. Uh, the head unit can hang and has a chance to scratch that if you're not careful. So um, just an extra precautionary measure, put some painter's tape there. If you want to go the extra mile, you can actually put some painter's tape over the, the face of the navigation or your touch screen or whatever. Um, it's a little bit of overkill since you have the moving blanket, but uh, you know some people like to take that extra step, so go for it. All right, so this is the controller system with the harnesses. Everything is well labeled. As you can see, it'll say two monitor. The plugs are exactly the same as factory plugs, so you can match them up. It has a female end, which you connect the factory harness to, and it will act as a piggyback. Um, it has an RCA jack. This RCA cable is the one that's coming from the camera. It has a power supply that's uh, hooked up to the harness. My camera just needed a single 12 volt power supply uh, and I hooked that up to the harness. Uh, for the factory plugs, basically you're gonna just take them out. So you take off this one, take off this one, and then there's one underneath on the second row. You take that off and you hook up the new ones. And like I said, you just hook up the, the factory ones to the female ends of the new one and it acts as a piggyback. So let's do that right now. So as you can see, the new harnesses are plugged into the monitor. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna match up the factory harnesses to the female ends of the new harness. Um, and then there will be two more plugs. Uh, that we will hook up to the controller box after we're done. All right, with everything hooked up to the monitor, all you have to do is run these two harnesses to the controller box. The plugs are different, so it's pretty intuitive which one goes in which, uh, and we're almost done. So next thing to do is try to figure out what you wanna do with the controller box. Some people wrap it up in foam. I just kinda jam it in there and Make sure it's nice and snug. Um, people use foam to keep it from rattling. I have so many rattles in my truck that I don't even notice anymore. So totally up to you what you want to do. All right, so the monitor should go back fairly easy. If you're getting some resistance, it may be the wiring harness behind it. So try to reposition the wiring harness. The monitor should rest nice and flat without too much resistance. And these bolts don't need to be super tight, just hand tight. All right, putting the bezel is just doing everything in reverse. It'll snap right back in. I forgot to mention that you should probably check everything before you even put the monitor back in. Make sure your cameras are working right. Uh, just because you, I'd hate for you to put everything back in and... and find some stuff wrong um, sort of you definitely want to, to troubleshoot track, before you put everything back in oh yeah that's a snail trail 4x4 podcast shout out to snail oh, trail 4x4 Hill, Hill, or Toyota Hill. all right now we have everything back in um, basically what you want to do is you double click on the mode button that'll bring your front camera on you can toggle between up arrow and down arrow that'll bring your rear camera on and then all you have to do is just hit mode button one time and it'll return to whatever you you were using navigation audio whatever double click mode front camera defaults down rear camera you can toggle in between those which is really cool and stay on for 30 seconds um, and if you want to keep it on, all you gotta do is hold the 
up arrow until it beeps and it'll stay on for as long as you want until you hit the mode button you can again toggle between front camera rear camera uh, it's pretty cool so one thing cool about the system is that your reverse camera will work as normal but once you put it into drive it'll automatically switch to front camera and it'll stay on for 30 seconds or until you hit a certain speed I want to say it's 20 miles per hour um, haven't been really paying too much attention but it's pretty damn cool so I have a cone set up in front of me I'm gonna test it out to see exactly how close I can get using the camera I will let you know when the cone is out of view which is now and then I will stop when I can't see it in the monitor anymore right there so that's about how close I got using the camera um, again my bumper sticks out quite a bit so it does block a good chunk of the field of view uh, I am thinking about maybe moving it somewhere lower so I can see a lot more uh, but I think that's pretty good um, I would say it's about less than a foot uh, from the cone all right guys so that's about it for the install video for the front camera. Very easy, highly recommend it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, hit me up on Valley Taco on Instagram, uh, DM me. I'm always happy to answer any questions you guys have. All right, take care.